do very simple things. So we have the Euler equations of motion, and I'll write them out. I stand up. I want omega one, and you saw that I emphasized not so much, not so much the detailed form, but the structure. I really wanted to, to, because this happens so often, it was worth doing. I won't do it again, but what happens here? I One goes to two, two goes to three, one goes to two, oops, yeah. Two goes to three, one, up oh, two, three, and so on. This goes to three, then goes to one, and you just pick up those cyclic, that cyclic pattern. This happens so often, I wanted to write that down. There's one problem I have. I haven't quite finished it. I want to do an example. I'm probably not going to be able to do it. But it's a bar rotating in a circle. And the, the goal is to find the torques. So you have this thing rotating around here. Uh, you got a mass here. It's a, a massless bar. So it rotates around like this. It comes around like this. Make these circles. Haven't quite finished it yet, but I'm going to probably assign that because I haven't been able to quite figure it out. I'll give you guys and give it to you guys. All right. Actually, I do have it. Yeah, just one bar spinning around. Look, it's doing this. Doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like the drum, like the drummers do, you know, like the drummers do. All right. So it's the the inertia around the moment of inertia. One of them is zero if they're, if they're point masses, because this is called that. I3, then I3 is equal to zero because it doesn't, if it's a point mass, it doesn't cost you anything to spin. If it were a finite mass, you'd have to worry about the spin around that axis, right? But if it's a point here and a point here to simplify the problem. So it's a problem you might want to think about. And you can see this thing has, and you can break omega down. I1 equal I2 because here's the mass. Here's I1. Here's I2 around those. That's just ML squared, 2 ML squared, right? So we'll, I want to finish that problem. I actually have it. I just haven't put it in a form I like yet. I just did it. It's all on pencil. Okay. So let's look at a uh, the general solution of these as these, this set of equations, as I alluded to earlier, is generally very, very difficult. I could barely get to work on simple examples on Mathematica the last time I... I was thrust into this course midway through the first semester. And it's because everything in general is a function of time. That is no joke. So when you have things that are a function of time, it, it turned out, let me just point out something else. I did a paper many, many years ago. Uh, I didn't know it. It's a very hot thing now. I didn't know what, we didn't know what to call it. We just did the paper as a, as a metaphor of interest. It was easier to solve the Schrodinger equation for in a for six coupled states and what it is to solve these you have had enough experience with the schrodinger equation to know something the schrodinger equation is linear wiggle here wiggle here change the phase change the but change the amplitude but wiggle here we're the these are nonlinear, right you got omega 2 times omega 3 in one of those terms so all of a sudden and they're coupled nonlinear differential equations then right and those are notoriously difficult to solve so let's look at it. However, there is a nice case that allows for getting some intuition about what these things do. So we'll look at torque-free motion. No torques. This is a neat problem, actually. No torques. So N1 is equal to N2 is equal to N3. Okay. And we're going to do a symmetri uh, nice symmetric problem like we would have maybe for a cylinder or maybe even for something like this. Maybe even a prolate spheroid. What am I foreshadowing here? Earth. Oh, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that what it is? Am I using the word wrong? Oblate? Is it oblate? All right. We'll look it up and make sure. So this, we get, we deconstruct these equations. I'll have I1. Omega one dot, yeah, that's good. Minus omega two, omega three. Then we'll have I two minus I three. And that's equal zero. 
and then I1 omega 2 dot minus omega 2 omega 1 I3 minus I1 we can set all this stuff equal we can start simplifying these in a minute I2 here I3 omega 3 dot minus 0 or let me actually I don't want to do, I don't want to get ahead of us this is omega 2 omega 3 omega 3 omega 1 3 1 and this should be 1 2 here and then we'll have i1 minus i2 however we know right away that this will this is what I didn't want to get I did not put this step in the notes but I do want to do it explicitly while I'm talking i1 is equal to i2 correct are we our axes? In a way that makes I1 equal to I2. Okay. Like an oblate spheroid, okay? A cylinder. Right. Okay? Yeah. As, as principal axes. Okay? So because I1 is equal to I2, this will simplify it. First of all, let's do it. Let's just say right now, right now, right now, not waiting. I3 omega 3 dot is equal to 0. And that tells me omega 3 dot omega 3 is equal to a constant. Okay? Just some constant. And I'm going to just call it omega 3 constant. I'm not going to put a substitute, substitute beta. So I got in trouble yesterday. I got in trouble with this. I almost cursed it with, like, I almost dropped a bomb on that that triangle just now but Nora's in the room so she has very delicate ears and I don't I don't want to offend her using foul language all right Maybe I'm not that interesting. <laughs> or I don't want my likers and subscribers you know this guy's got a potty mouth all right so we can then have omega one here's our new system or reduced system better is a, a better word than new system reduced system actually take a second without looking at the notes and do it. Take a second and do it. You you don't have to, huh? Don't look at the okay. Okay. There are yeah. So it's equation thirty. I'm I'm trying to get two equations for omega one and omega two. Omega one more specifically omega one dot and omega two dot. If you're just trying to do it in your head, that's fine. So I get omega one dot is equal to omega three, actually minus omega three. I put it out front because it's a constant actually. I three, trust me, I checked the signs on this over I one. I have to flip that, which I call I define to be, and then I have an omega-2 out here. I write in this kind of idiosyncratic way just because when I'm writing at the typewriter, it's how I keep track. You may have it a little bit differently, and that's fine. But when I'm when I'm not the typewriter, for God's sakes, I sound like I'm a thousand years old. Okay. When I'm sitting at, at my, my desk with a cuneiform tablet and a chisel, all right, and, and a hammer chiseling these things. When I'm sitting in my computer, I actually just said typewriter out loud. Okay, I don't think you know what a typewriter is, half of you. You know what a typewriter is? Tick, 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 tick. Okay. So it's, yeah, I made a mistake. Get that white tape, da, 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 da. get that white out. Yeah, 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 you probably didn't. So when I'm sitting at the typewriter, I am doing it this way. Can I call this minus omega, capital omega, omega 2. And then, and I'll tell you what capital omega is in a minute, although it's evident from this. Yeah. Oh, because I flipped the omega, I flipped the I3 and the I1 just because I wanted to, because I wanted to set up the solution of these equations in the most transparent way possible. The I3 and I, I, I1 and I2 are the same. That is why I made you do it. <laughs> right there is the reason I made you do it. Why are you looking for? I am looking on page. I am looking page six in the notes on thirty nine and forty. There was a meth. There was a reason I made you do that. 
And you just showed why. Oh, look, he's done this before. <laughs> Omega one, I three, because I wanted these to be the same, Stephen, right. over I one. And this is times Omega one. I have a misprint, but that's okay. You are looking at equation 32? I'm looking at equation 39. So I got a misprint in the notes, but that's okay. This is omega 3, and then this is omega 2 here. This is omega 2, and this is omega 1. And this is defined to be omega this. Okay? And this capital omega is clearly, even though I do have a misprint, I've corrected it. I'm going to have to do a new set of notes anyway just for this. This is all constant, right? We just talked about, we just talked about that omega uh, three was constant. So whatever it is, now this this system, and I'm going to rewrite it. This system occurs so often. It's one of the very few that I was able to do by myself as a kid. I was just so happy when I saw it. This is this this sort of upside down coupled system. You saw me also, I didn't quite do it this way when we, oftentimes I will, uh, but I didn't quite do the rotating unit vectors this way, but this is a good trick and I think it's worth your knowing. You see that these are coupled, omega one, omega two, this, the first time, when you see this, you immediately need to think about differentiating both sides. So you'll have here, when you differentiate both sides, remember dot's a time derivative, correct? And then you do the thing. But if you want to have it like this, you have omega one dot, right? But this one, this call this one one and call this one two. Then I'll have omega. Ah. There's that. That's the onset of the, the palsy right there. You see that slip? It's all downhill from here. Minus equal. Minus omega. And then I have an omega two dot. But this is omega times omega one giving me Omega double dot plus capital Omega squared, Omega one equals zero. Michael Lynn, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you pick, can you turn your volume up please? Or is it my volume that controls the, the world? Uh, I think it might be your volume. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 okay. So um, Michael Lynn will tell you that that's the most ubiquitous equipment occurs again and again and again in all of physics. Yeah. And I have often said to Michael Lynn, if you can't, to my classes in which Michael Lynn has sat in the past, if you don't look at that equation and immediately recognize the solutions and write them down, I will never sign off on your graduating. You can, if you can't look at that equation in five years or four years or however long it takes you to get a PhD, that's going to be on, when you're doing your oral defense, I'm going to hold that equation up and I'm going to say, what are the solutions of this equation? And if you can't tell me the solutions are omega one, is equal to a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t, or however you want to, you can use e to the i's, I don't care. Or you can use cosine omega, capital omega t plus phi, but you have to have two, right? And then you have omega 2, and you can do it any way you want, omega 2. Now, the one thing you have to be careful, and let me say this, you have to be careful that you satisfy the original equations. You just can't write down any damn thing you want. Look back over here. You have to be internally consistent. We see that omega 1 dot is equal to minus gamma or gamma omega omega two and this will then be let's do this out you can't just assign anything you want they have to like i said you have to be internally consistent this will be minus a sine omega t plus omega b omega cosine omega t So you have to be a little careful with that. 
and all that gets multiplied by minus omega. We agree? So this is omega 2. But I have an omega 2, so I have to divide this. Is equal to omega two, so it all it all it all lands nicely. Okay. And you can check. And by the way, you can do this one more time to see that it's internally consistent. Right here. You do it one more time right there too. So you have to be very careful about just assigning these things willy nilly, because they're inter You have to. This is the reason I did this problem. The reason I did this problem is to show you they have to be internally consistent. If not, you just write down C and D, right? Yeah. But it's not C and D. Well, right. Then you can... Yeah. There, there's, you know, ways around it if you want. Okay. So we just, example with solving this. What makes this a, such a fantastic development of this is, let's say we start, we have omega 1 at T is equal to 0. Let's, let's pick the, the initial conditions the way we want, okay? So at t is equal to zero, I'm trying to get the ink out of it. T is, t is equal to zero. Yeah, you need to, I need a new band, I need a new ribbon. <laughs> so you get, you set up the constants and I'll probably leave this as an exercise. You'll find omega, t equal set up appropriate initial conditions. Let's just take them all along, for example, the x-axis, okay? Let's say initially omega-1 is along the x-axis. So set up appropriate. I just gave you the answer. I don't even know why I'm going to assign it now. You set up so omega. In general, you have omega-1, E1 hat, plus omega-2, T, E2 hat, correct? Plus, and omega-3 is nice and constant, right? So I'll just give that without a, an E3. So if a T is equal to zero for along the E1 axis, you'll get omega is equal to A cosine omega T E1 hat plus A. See, this is a circle. It's a circle. A sine omega T E2 hat plus omega-3. And let's actually do it this way, E3 hat. So the motion, if you have the notes open and you have the notes in front of you, this is a good picture. I don't remember where I got it from. This might be in the Texas Goldstein. Look at that son of a gun. Look at the circle up there. That is awesome. So we have whatever this thing is. This, we already know what that is. That's a circle, right? That goes around looking down from above. Okay, everybody hear me? Looking down from above. That's what this omega-1 plus omega-2 does. Goes around in a circle like that. And what's omega-3 do? Straight up. Straight up. And then this goes around here like this. And we're all getting PSD, PTSD from that finite rotation vector thing we did before. We're getting it again. But that's what it is, right? And in this particular example, in this particular thing, you have this rotation rate, this constant omega around that fixed omega-3 axis. This is precession. And your text gives a nice, nice example of how the Earth's oblate, prolate, I don't know what it is now, predicts a 306-day period of precession that arises because I3 is bigger than I1 and I2. And I'm not going to do that in here, but it's really neat. It's never, it doesn't quite out, it doesn't come out to be that. It doesn't quite... If you, by the way, this is the, the procession is a really fascinating thing. If you read the notes, I don't think I'll get, I may get to it today, but the, one of the last things I do in the problems, if you look at the problems, I really wanted to understand, you know, they talk about procession and you have all these equations for the symmetric top that we're about to do. And you will see, you need to yawn, buddy. If you don't open your mouth and yawn, you know, you can, you, you can rupture your spleen. No, I made that up. Okay, <laughs> but, but but you need to let that out. Okay, it's not good for you. You need to yawn. If you got to yawn, yawn. Yeah. Did the coefficient be become the order 
What it's coefficient? Also, no, it's uh, no, why did it be okay? So I have omega one is equal to a cosine plus b sine e1 hat, correct? So at t is equal to zero, this will be a cosine omega t zero plus zero e1 hat, right? So this tells me that, huh? At time t is equal to zero, right? If it so, I just happen to pick. I just decided to pick it that way. It's consistent with what we're doing. And if I want omega, actually, no. What I said was at t equals it points only along e one, right? Yeah. At t equals, at t equals zero points along e one. Yeah, and that will give me at then t is equal to uh, when omega t is pi over two. Then it'll point over here, and then it'll point here. Okay. And this really comes down to continual recognition of something we did in about the second week or, or late. This row of t going around in a circle is cosine phi of t i hat plus sine phi of t j hat, where this is omega t and this is omega t. That's what that fundamentally comes down to. I wanted to point at t is equal to zero along the x-axis. And then once, if these things are orthogonal, the omega two then has to be sine, just like I wrote for rho hat here. I have to be this. If it's initially here, then over here, I have no choice. Physically, anyway, mathematically, it'll come out too, if you go through the analysis, because then you want it to have some finite, omega three has to be this way, so that's not touched. But then you want it to rotate like this, right? It's just an initial condition problem. At t is equal to zero, Cosine zero, I hat, okay? So I point along I hat. If I let anything in from the other one, it won't point that way anymore. What? Could you solve it if they weren't coupled like this? No. Without? I can't. Without software? I can't. I can't. That's why I was so interested in doing that, that problem, this problem, because I think we can actually solve that problem. Would there be any physical systems that would not couple like this? Uh, put a put a large put a yes, all of them except this. Is <laughs> <laughs> you you just solved a problem that's a set of measure zero. Okay, so this and the so, so this is easier than actually the symmetric top, but this is essentially like a symmetric top. The symmetric top is because it's the it's because it's built in a certain way. Oh, you're saying because we put the origin. Of yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. So as soon as you look, man. So we have the. Let me let me show you real quick, real quick. Okay, here's the problem we just did, right? Look, here's the jolly green giant. All of, all bets are off now, because I one is not equal to I two. Oh, 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 none of you remember that either. Green giant, you you worked at Win Dixie. You know the green giant. They only have the, the commercial pen. Yeah, yeah. I remember the commercial one too. The Jolly Green Giant? Yeah. He, didn't you find him menacing? Oh, 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 like I'm going to kill you. Yeah, you know who else did? Jeffrey Dahmer. All right, let's continue. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I feel like Dahmer. I feel like Dahmer maybe wasn't a benevolent guy. They gave off. That's, that's kind of a stretch to. I don't know. That that might be. That might be a potential lawsuit with with Green Giant. <laughs> if you're, what is the name of that company? Ho ho ho! Jolly Green Giant. What was the name of the company? I think they. I, think I they lost were it. By somebody else. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So the, but go ahead. Running. The second one, yes. When got to, yeah. I'm trying to use the same concept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is this is gone because this is omega two. As soon as I because I can pick my this is a good let's do it physically. Okay. Let's do it physically. So I've got this one and I've got this one, right? 
They don't like that. They, but this is the same general, A general. and the same A and the same B, right? <laughs> if I put, oh, if I put is this, this over here, right? Green okay. Green. Okay. Yeah. I, this A has some amplitude, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the initial condition. I'm going to make sure it's over here. The other one immediately tells me it has to be over here because it's signed. Because once this A goes, this A that goes with, this A that goes with cosine here goes with sine for this one. Okay. So as soon as the cosine is present, the other one, the one direction, the other one has to be sine in the two direction. Huh? Same A. Same A. Okay. That's why that is exactly the reason I was looked at with skepticism when I said you got to do them internally consistent. You got to make sure they're internally consistent. You did. You looked at me. You said, sure, in your mind. They, you have to make sure they're internally consistent so you recognize that's the same constant as you move down the. Okay. Can't remember the name of that company. So I'm going to do the symmetric top. Here's a disclaimer it's an italics. The text does a does 12 pages I'm reading on this subject. I am absolutely not going to do 12. I'm not going to do anywhere near that amount of material on a top. You are free to proceed through the development provided to you on long plane rides. But I am not going to do that much on this. I'm, I'm going to get to the essence of it. And I feel that Simon does a better job. Bang for the buck. It's, yeah, Simon Mechanics. Simon. I think it's K Simon, not sure. Mechanics. He gets to he gets to the point immediately. Not classical mechanics, just mechanics. Okay. So the geometry of the precessing top is shown in figure two. So figure two, I've got to look at it. I'm not going to be drawing that. So my top, when I do it in illustrations, is going to look like this. That's not good either. I should. All right, let's see. Maybe if I had better luck this way. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Symmetric top is a rotating object with one point fix. The point is not the center of mass. There it is right here. So the Euler equations are not the way to do this problem ab initio. How do I know that? This is one of the things I tried with my with my Mathematica technique many, many years ago. It didn't work out. It is, just did not work out for me. There's probably somebody who knows about all this stuff. But so the top, you guys have all played, you played with the top before? Yeah. Bay Blaze, Bay Blaze, let it rip. Yeah. <laughs> you ever played with the top, Nora? I'm gonna buy you one. Who are we? Really? They, you put a little string on them and you pull them. Okay. First question. Does anybody know a simple way? I I don't think there's any. I'm sure the physics of it tells you if you could measure it appropriately, you could pull at a constant rate and do tau is equal to i alpha, and mm -hmm. get the spin rate at the time you're done, but that's kind of hard to do. You'd need a scale, right? You don't know how how hard you're pulling. Has anybody ever tried to measure the rotation rate of a spinning top? Because it goes too fast, I think, for the human eye, right? Could you do it with a strobe by putting a little dot on it or something and sinking the strobe? You can just measure the time that you took to pull the thing and then... Get yeah, the but you still know the force. Linear. Velocity should be proportional to the rotational velocity, right? Yeah, but it's still, it's still, tau is equal to I alpha, right? Mm -hmm. So you do tau is R times F, right? For the torque. And then you don't know the force. You're saying do it by, you want to do conservation of energy? You have to know something. Here's the thing, you have to know something. Yeah, you know the what do you the know? Acceleration of the, the linear. How do you know? You measure time it with a stopwatch. Or something. Are you that consistent? Do it ten times. <laughs> Take the average. <laughs> I guess you could do that. I guess you could do it. 
Okay. So you could, you're, you're, yeah, I'm talking about measuring the torque and you're talking about measuring the alpha. Yeah. You have, I have, I'm doing torque here and you're doing alpha there. Yeah. That's the two, that's, that you're looking at this side. Yeah, I guess that's possible. I think it's just easier to measure that way too. Like you do it with like $10 at Home Depot. Like I don't need that. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think is easier? What do you think is easier? If you have a test to put in, it'd be way more accurate to do what you're saying. No, it's because you'll see that I, I, I'm i still humiliated. If you read the end of the notes, you'll see that I'm still humiliated by this uh, this effort. That, uh, that I was assigned to, I tried doing this in my mechanics class, and I was supposed to measure the precession, right? We were supposed to We were supposed to measure the mass of the top, make reasonable estimates for the moment of inertia of the top and get omega for the top as it spun. And we were supposed to predict this precession. I was like 130% off. And I don't mean that it was 100 and 130. I mean, I was like a factor of 2.6 off, okay? So this was humiliating because I was surrounded by a bunch of kids who were doing experimental physics and they wanted to be experimental physicists. And it was humiliating, I wasn't even close. They were like getting, oh, I'm 8.2% off. Oh, look at mine. I was only 6.8% off and I was like 230% off or 260%. So. I want to do this. I want to do this with us. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, so call it what's your question, San Antonio. I think we may go. Yeah. Let me try. I'm going to go buy a top. I'm going to give it to you. So you go when we're done with it. <laughs> so you can play with it and learn how to. Okay. Yeah. They're they're not at all evenly distributed no, in mass. Like you have to. You have. We'll to measure play. it. We'll get a scale and we'll measure it. We'll get a scale and we'll measure it. We'll get. I'm I'm telling you right now. We are getting better than two hundred and sixty factor two point six off. Yeah. Well, what we can do, what we can do for the moment of inertia is exactly what you're talking about. We can hang a weight, oh, sure. mg, right, and measure it, and we can get the moment of inertia around that axis. All right. Anyway, I'm sorry. This is this is a, a vanity project of mine <laughs> because I was, you know, you never forget your humiliations. So first one and the easiest one is psi dot. The Euler equations are not the way to do this, so it's kind of a mixed approach. So psi dot is the spin rate around this z-axis. So you might want to have figure two open and look and looking at figure two. These are very intuitive and that's great. They come they do complicate they do complicate the issue though. They complicate it because things become a little more algebraically complex. It'd be great if you could do the omega one, omega two, omega three, right? It'd be fantastic. They're first order in the left hand side. It just doesn't work that way. The way to do it is with the Hamiltonian or the Lagrangian. Okay, I heard you say the word. So this is the precession rate around the z prime axis, and the z the z prime axis is the vertical. Okay, so I'll put that here. So the precession rate, looking down from above, is what we just talked about. It's going around here. So this is the precession. Remember rate, okay? So it's this. Looking down from above, it's that what it's the omega we had a minute capital omega we had a minute ago. It just show the the tilt very well. It does not show the tilt very well, okay? The theta the theta is the look. Here's the theta. The theta is the tilt. Right. This is, for example, if you've ever seen a top and you haven't, but a top will do this. It's called nutation, and that's theta dot. Okay. Theta is the theta off essentially the z axis anyway, right? Theta is the old fashioned spherical. Okay. So theta dot is the nutation rate. So this is a z prime. He calls that z prime because the or that Euler z is related to the original z prime through that angle theta you might remember euler angles remember down we can come like this so this is the nutation rate all right 
And this is the reason, by the way, I made you do problem 5.4. or have made you do this is the one where this the omega one omega two omega three so when you write down t the kinetic so the best way to do this problem is the lagrangian now there's one more thing we have to include which is this guy right here where that's about where the center mass would maybe a little lower center mass would be about here right you think be. yep so that's mg so the potential energy relative to the ground Remember, this is this is theta in here. So the potential energy, V, is only a function of that angle. It's MgL cosine theta. Where L is measured from here. Yeah. Okay. There's theta in here. By alternate interior angles are congruent. It's on the other side. So it's MgL cosine theta. It's essentially just the height above the ground, right? That's all it is. It's a height above the ground, which is this height right here. Yeah, because I'm going to draw a picture for you, okay? Here's L, right? Alternate interior angles are congruent, correct? I think that's correct. So if this is L, this is L cosine theta. That help? Okay. I'm too, because we're doing this with Lagrangian now. You're looking at the zero point to be anywhere? Yeah, but I like it on the ground. Okay. I like it where the fixed point is because the fixed point's not going to go anywhere. Right? Yeah. You want to put it at the top. Look, you put it at the top of the top. Yes. If you put it at the center of the... I'll tell you what. We'll, let, let's try that later. Let's put, let's put it at the center of mass, right? You know, the problem is when you do it at the center of mass, now... Yeah, I, I imagine you could put it at the center of mass, but you still have to set your zero somewhere, right? If I put my zero on the ground, now I have to I introduce that mg1 minus cosine theta thing again, which is no big deal, but it's an, an additional complication. It's an overall constant. That's all it is. So I like it the zero on the ground. That's it. I just like the zero on the ground. I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure how the, you got, you got Goldstein with you? I don't know where he puts his zero. I did this. I, I get it was signed. No, he doesn't know where What smart man. <laughs> Extraordinarily uh, smart fellow there. Okay. He's really smart. I'm not. So I have to put it where it's the least complicated. So there to put on the ground. So our kinetic energy in this sort of Euler formulation would look like this. If we had everything diagonalized and principal axied up, I know that's not a verb, but if we had everything principal axied up, this is what it would be in a nice, beautiful universe where we were able to do that. Of course, we can't. And this is the reason I made you, in fact, write out in, in that homework problem what omega-1, omega-2, and omega-3 were. You remember that? You just turned it in. It was chapter four homework. It was chapter four homework, right? And you have it, and I don't have, but I did, I went directly to it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to write it again. So this came out to be, I actually have to look them up. I don't think I wrote them down again. Oh, that's my mistake. I should have written them down again. That's all right. So this will be one. This will be T. See if I can backtrack it. Will be one half I one omega one squared was phi dot. I don't remember them. Does anybody have them open? Are you looking for the body frame or the space? No, I want I want omega one in terms of phi and theta. Okay. 
It's P dot sine theta. Yes, it is. P dot sine theta. But plus theta dot cosine sine. And this one should be theta dot, let me guess, sine theta, cosine psi, plus theta dot sine psi, minus theta dot sine psi, that won't enter. Yeah, it's and then this one should be, let me guess, psi dot, Plus, I don't remember what is it. Phi dot cosine theta. Psi dot plus phi dot cosine theta. I used to know these because I wanted I wanted to get that top I wanted to get that top <laughs> problem. So I really really wanted to get that top problem. I really really wanted to show those guys I could I could do that experiment. Now I'm not even allowed in Ray O'Neill's lab. He won't even let me go in there. He's so worried I'm going to break something. Okay. So if we work this out. That one your lab lab? No. His That's experimental lab. His lab lab. That will be that. No, Ray O'Neill's over there. I1. So we'll get phi dot squared. Sine squared. Theta, unless I made a mistake, plus yes. theta dot squared. The cross term will cancel, correct? And then this will stay the same. This I three will stay. And I can't not do any. I cannot do anything with the I three because this I one and I two are equal. That's the only reason this thing simplifies. You can imagine if I two was not equal to I three, you got to be in no better position than when you were when you started. That's what makes a symmetric top a textbook problem for everybody. This stays the same. Okay, everybody, look at those. Everybody, you got two conserved momentum, two conjugate momentum. Give them to me. P what and P what? Okay, so what's one conjugate momentum? Look at it. What are you looking for? If you come through this far and you can't answer that question, I, I've got you to. I've got to get you back to the to basics. You're looking for a cyclic coordinate, one that doesn't appear explicitly, right? Mm -hmm. So this P psi is one you can do. This is partial. Oh, I, for, I should go here, minus L. So it's minus V of theta. I'm not gonna write the whole thing down again. So MGL cosine theta. So this should come out to be a conserved momentum, but there's another one, right? P phi. There's no phi. There's plenty of theta, but there's no phi. So these two are conserved quantities. What is the third one? Energy. You'll see me say in the notes, and that's why I asked you, by the way, remember when I asked you on your exam, find two constants of the motion? Easy to forget that. Energy is a constant of the motion. So I can also say E is equal to T, and I won't write all this out. How are we doing on time? We're a little over. T plus V. I was going to give it to you as an in-class exercise to actually solve these, and I'm not convinced I'm not going to do that on Monday. So if you want to, yeah, they're not bad at all, right? In fact, I'm not going to do it. This is I3. By the way, there's only one place. Curves right there, right? So I3. The two goes away, and I get psi dot plus phi dot cosine theta. That's omega-3, right? That's omega-3. Omega-3 is a constant. And then P5 is a little more complicated, but this will be I1 uh, phi dot. Sine squared theta. And I got one over here. Yeah. Plus I3. Psi dot. Because you got to square that out, right? 
the two goes away, doesn't it? Yeah, sure does. Psi dot cosine theta. Okay. I think that is plus I'm missing work for, I'm missing the cosine square. I'm missing the cosine. It goes with yeah, plus two p dot. Yeah. Cosine yeah. Yeah, that's so why I'm rushing because it's the end of class. But yeah, we'll 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 patch that up on Monday. Okay. But you get an idea that it's just these two. And then the energy is just plus V instead of minus V. Good question. Good question. What is that constant? P5 tells you it's a momentum, right? Some kind of momentum. It's like it's a combi, but but look at it. Look at it. It's a good question. Look at it. It doesn't, it's not just this, right? Because it's got this in it. It's not that transparent. It's definitely not that transparent because it's a combination of this, this motion and this motion. See? The problem is, you know, you don't have a window, then this is always the issue with the Lagrangian formulation. I don't have a vector that goes with this. Because there's a sine squared theta and a cosine squared theta. Yeah, but it's I1 and I3. It's I1 and I3. So it's like the, the two motions are coupled. That's the issue sometimes with the Lagrangian stuff, that the vector part of this is lost. It would be nice to see where that vector points. Yeah. Because we know, look, the omega-3 goes around like this. Omega-3 is right here, right? Omega-3 is right there. Another reason I wanted to do that, the bar with the two masses, maybe it'll give us some insight. I've never completely, it's, it's. I remember uh, Ed Deloge who tried to teach me this class and I failed miserably, didn't get an F, I mean, but, you know, I didn't understand it. Uh, this allows you to know anything you want. You, you can answer any question about the top now. And some German wiseacre said, what color is it? And I thought that was a fantastic. <laughs> I thought that was, I thought that was top notch. <laughs> We're going to get that. We are going to do that top problem.